Um, I don't know if if I'm the only one. I if I had to bet, I would bet that I'm not. But um, how many of you have ever hit your funny bone? Mm-hmm. Man, we we've all experienced the awkward feeling that comes with hitting the funny bone. They call it the funny bone because when you hit it, you want to cry. But you find yourself laughing. And it's uncontrollable. It's, you, you really have no control over it. You, you, you don't make yourself laugh. It's you, you laugh as a result of the feeling that has come from what you've just experienced. They call it the funny bone. What's interesting is they call it the funny bone, but it, it actually ain't, uh, it's actually not a bone. I found out that what we call the funny bone is actually a nerve, a nerve that runs from the brain all the way to your pinky. And what happens is when you hit that nerve at just the right angle, it sends a signal from your brain all the way through your body that results in this uncontrollable burst of energy that for whatever reason comes out as a euphoric laugh. It's painful. You want to cry. Sometimes a tear may swell up in your eye, but you find yourself laughing. It's called the funny bone. And the funny bone is funny to me because I feel like in this text, Sarah just got hit by life in the funny bone. What's interesting about this text is many people look at this text and and we we indict Sarah. We, We put her on trial and we say, oh, Sarah was so faithless. She she so did not believe the word of the Lord over her life that she's mocking, she's laughing. But I would argue, I would argue, and I'm going to do my best on this morning to get my matlock on. I would argue that Sarah was not just laughing as a result of disbelief, but Sarah was laughing because life hit her in the funny bone. Ah, If I were to give today's sermon a title, will you help me preach it real quick? Look your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I've been laughing. To keep from crying. Uh, Your neighbor don't know nothing about that. So look across the room real quick at another neighbor. Say other neighbor. neighbor. I don't know about you. There are times in my life. I was laughing. To keep from crying. Amen. If you can uh, uh, feel that on this morning, just give God a praise right there. Laughing. From crying. This this text that we're looking at, uh, chapter 18, verses 9 through 15, if you look at it, it can be broken down in three sections. These are not my points, but I just want to teach Bible for a little bit. You can break it down into three areas, three points. Uh, we start off in verses 9 and 10, where a son is being promised. A son is being promised. Now, that sounds weird because the truth of the matter is this son had been promised over 25 years ago, but the son is being promised again. This time, it's a time sensitive promise, though. The first time God just told Abram, uh, go, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. But he didn't tell him when it was going to happen. But now he arises and the son is promised, but it's a time sensitive. Somebody say time sensitive. It is a time sensitive promise. Not only is the son promised, but the son is promised with Within 365 days, he says, by this time next year, you're going to have the thing that I spoke. And I don't know who I'm talking to on this morning, but somebody should have gotten gave God a praise right there because there's some things you've been waiting for for years, some things that you never thought you would see, some things you really thought God had forgotten about. But somebody say this time next year, ah, my life going to look a whole lot different. By, by, by this time next year, I'm going to have what God said I get by this time next year I'm gonna have that elevation by by this time next year the job I'm at won't be the job I'm at no more by this time next year you're gonna see the book I've been talking about that I already wrote it and put by this time next year my life gonna be a little different because truth of the matter is Abram and Sarah they, they 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 got a little disheartened they were getting discouraged they got desperate And they started trying to make some things happen. But this promise that was initially just a promise is now a time sensitive promise that what you've been waiting for for 25 years, you're about to have in a year. Mm. A son is promised, but not only is a son promised, but 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 a mother is perplexed. (laughs) Mama is perplexed. What am I saying? Mama don't know what to do right now. (laughs) Because mama like, uh, bro, I'm almost 90 years old. (laughs) 
And stuff that used to work don't work no more. And it ain't just my parts that ain't working. His parts ain't working either. So what you mean by this time next year? Where was that energy 25 years ago? And even then, it was a little too late, but I was hopeful. She's perplexed. She she don't know whether to laugh or to cry. She she don't know whether to go in there and, and jump his bones or, or she don't know what to do. She's, she, she's perplexed. She's perplexed because, because what they're saying doesn't match what she's feeling. Right. And I don't know if you've ever been there where you've received a prophetic word that life was about to look amazing, but as soon as you left the church, life looked like all hell had broken loose. I, I don't know if you've ever been there when God said you were about to see money beyond your wildest dreams, but you checked your bank account and it was negative. You owed them money. I, I don't know if you've ever experienced that before when, when, when they said run around the church three times and your boo is coming, uh, but ain't nobody sliding in your DMs. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but she perplexed. She doesn't know what to do. Ain't nobody checking for y'all. You don't know what to do. You're perplexed. Right. The son is promised. The mother is perplexed. But this is the part I love. A question is raised about God's power. Yeah. Because in all of her perplexity, she is then met with the question, is there anything too hard for God? Is, is there anything that God has ever come across that, that did not change by the time he left? Is there anything that has been spoken that God has not made manifest. His word does not return unto him void, but it accomplishes what he sends it forth to do. I don't know if you have experienced that before, but when God says a thing and the very thing that he says, you see it. Yes. His, 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 his power is, is raised into question and that's what we're experiencing. But it's, it's the perplexity that I really want to dance around today because it's in this place of perplexity that many of us find ourselves in what I just described laughing in order to stop from crying. Yes. The reason I want to argue that Sarah is laughing to keep from crying because the same way that nerve is a sensitive area uh, uh, when we hit that thing and we react with laughter that we cannot control. I believe what is happening to Sarah in this text is that God has just hit a very sensitive thing. Uh -huh. The reason I say it's sensitive is because, again, Sarah is almost 90 years old. She's 89. The Bible says that she has Isaac, her son, at the age of 90. So she's around 89 at this time. And again, parts that used to work ain't working no more. Cycles that used to cycle ain't cycling no more. There's, there's all the parts necessary, all the actions necessary to make this thing happen. It ain't happening no more. And so she is in a place of perplexity, but she's also in a place, I would say, of pain. Because I had just gotten to a place yeah. where I was all right yeah. not having it. Y'all yeah. can't testify to yeah. me. Yeah. Have, have, have there ever been some things yeah. in your life that you just yes. you just said, you know what? I, I, I think I'll be all right. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think I'll be good if I'm single for the rest of my life. Yeah. I, I'm tired of playing these games, God. I, I, I think I'll be okay. If, if my child just wakes up tomorrow, because all the dreams and aspirations that I had for him ain't quite panning out the way I thought. they were. So, if, God, if you just wake him up tomorrow, I'm okay with that. Because my dreams and my goals and my aspirations ain't quite panning out. But, God, I'm okay with that. Yes. God, I'm, I'm, I'm okay if I never hit that number. <laughs> In that Escalade, I've been dreaming. God, I'm okay. I'm going to drive this hoopty. Yeah. Now I live off this fixed income for the rest of my life. I'm okay. I'm finally at a place where I'm okay not having what God says I would have. This is a sensitive place for her because I believe she had gotten comfortable with alternatives. Somebody say alternatives. What, what do I mean? Well, they had a nephew named Lot and because they were getting so old, I think she adapted the idea that maybe we, we will just live vicariously through Lot. That even though that ain't my son, he's rolling with us. And so I would just become a mother figure to him. And and, and when that wasn't good enough, because God then gives the promise, uh, uh, she says, well, how, how about we just make something happen? How about I give you Hagar, my maid, and, and you sleep with her and I'll live vicariously through Hagar. And, and, and we'll raise this child like it's our own. But she invited unnecessary drama. 
drama into her house. Uh, but 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 it's okay. I'm okay with that. I I didn't made the mistake, and and I'll just live with it at this point. I I'm okay with not seeing the fullness. Jesus. I'm okay living in partiality. Yeah. And many of you can testify because you know what God has promised you. But you've been living a life of partiality. She's laughing to keep from crying because she's in pain. And I want to give you three reasons I believe we laugh to keep from crying. And these are the reasons I believe she laughs to keep from crying. But I believe that, that you're going to find yourself in here. But I don't want to just leave you with the wise. I want to leave you with some good news. Can I help you all today? Yeah. So if you're a note taker, I want to give you three reasons we, we may laugh to keep from crying. I'm going to pull them right from the text, I promise. I ain't going to make nothing up. Uh, the first reason I believe we laugh to keep from crying is because we have been trying for so long. Oh, I'm going to yeah. give you three T's on this morning. We've been trying. Somebody say, I've been trying, yeah. trying for a long time. A long time. Oh. I don't give you age away. We trying for so long. I'm, I'm pulling this right from verses 9 through 11. It says, where is your wife, Sarah, they asked him. They being the three angelic visitors that have showed up to Abraham's house. And uh, he says there in the tent, he answered, the Lord said, I will certainly come back to you in about a year's time. And your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent behind him. Abraham and Sarah were old and getting on in years. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. The first thing that jumps out to me here is, is the fact that the visitors are asking, where is Sarah? That might not strike you as odd, but I'm going to tell you why it should strike you as odd, because they're living in a tent. They're living in a tent. I'm going to say that again. They're living in a tent. OK, y'all ain't never been in a tent. Ain't that much room in a tent. Now, again, these are angelic visitors, but we would later find out that we're, what we are witnessing is a theophany. Someone say theophany. Yeah. This is a manifestation of God in physical form. So these are not just three angels, uh, but one of them is actually a representation of God, theophany. Uh, we know this because it goes on to say, and the Lord said, Lord, in all caps, speaking of him, Elohim, God, supreme. And so this is a theophany. So that tells me that not just three random angelic visitors. Visitors are asking this question, but God himself is asking this question. Now, the problem I have with that is because all my church life, I've been told that God has some omni qualities, that he's omnipotent, which means he is all powerful. There's nothing that God cannot do. Hence the question later, is anything impossible for God? But not only is he omnipotent, he's omnipresent, which means God is everywhere at the same time. Uh, God is here, there and everywhere. He's here in this church. He's, he's back at your house. God is everywhere. But 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 then there's another one. God is omniscient. God is omniscient, which which means God knows everything about everything. So how, how is it that a God who knows everything about everything is asking anything? God says, where is your wife? <laughs> now, again, that bothers me because he knows everything about everything, but also Bro, she right there. <laughs> the tent ain't but so be. She already here. Why are you asking, where is Sarah? Well, well, he's asking, where is Sarah? Because she's there in proximity. But she's not there in psyche. That her mind is not where her body is, that that her emotions is not where her body is, that that even her spirit is not where her body is. And I don't know if you've ever been there before, but when you've been waiting on a thing for a long time, you might find yourself losing yourself. Yeah. See, Sarah was there, but Sarah wasn't there. Yeah. And so God is asking a question reminiscent of what he asked in the garden. I, Adam, where art thou? A God who knows everything about everything is asking Adam, where are you? God, you made me and the garden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't a question of where are you in proximity? Yeah. It's that I don't see myself no more. Yeah. How is it that I made you in my image and my likeness, but I don't see me when I look in the garden? Yeah. And there's some of you have been waiting on promises so long that you look like the brokenness you've been experiencing. Yeah. There are some of you that God, you're in his house this morning, but he's asking, where are you? Your body came in, but 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 you didn't. 
you're sitting in the chair, but 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 that ain't quite you. Where, where, where are you? And this is the danger of waiting on the Lord is if you're not careful. See, we talked about this uh, in my last sermon, uh, a word for the waiting that when God says, wait, they that wait on the Lord. It's not they that are idle in the Lord, but it's actually the word that, that we translate endurance. So they that endure in the Lord. And the problem with some of us is we've been sitting, but we ain't been enduring. And so life is tossing you to and fro as you're waiting on this promise because you don't know what to do with everything that's going on. Sarah, where are you? He asked where she is, but 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 not only that, we, we again got to look at what's happening. She's been trying for a long time. Sarah is 89 years old now. After uh, uh, going into 89 years, she has not only been trying, but then she's been trying extra hard for the past 25 years because in the years prior, she did not have a word. All she had was a will. Yeah. She's been working in her will for all of these years. And then finally, she receives a word that all her work is about to pay off. But 25 years later, the work she's been doing ain't really amounted to nothing. Mm. Have you ever been believing God for something to the point that you started doing yeah. certain things? Yeah. You, 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 you started putting certain stuff in order. You, you started trying to make some stuff happen. And no matter what it is you did, no matter what it is you tried, no matter how many folks you connected with, no matter how many churches you moved around from, no matter how many YouTube preachers you watched and prophesied to you, nothing was manifesting that God said would happen. She's been trying for 89 years, 25 hard years of trying and and nothing is happening. And it's problematic because there's a pressure that comes with the word. Yeah. See, the word that's received to her husband is that I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Yes. Nations, plural. God, how are you going to make me a father of many nations and I can't have one son? It blows my mind how God promises us stuff that our minds can't fathom. But right. is that not his word? Yeah. <laughs> I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have you imagined the things that I have for you. I'm so glad that when God promises me something, it's beyond my control. Yeah. Because if it's beyond my control, then that means he has to be in control. Right. Yeah. And one of the problems that we run into is that we have this nasty need to be. Say what you say. In control. Yes. Can I tell you why you're really tired this morning? Because yeah. you've been trying to make a miracle yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and God said, listen, I'm the only one that's in the miracle working business. Yeah. I, you, you are the recipient of my miracles, but right. you are not the producer of right. them. And Sarah has been trying to make a miracle happen. We have first introduced to her not too many verses before this, and she is described as barren, which means her womb has never worked. God, how are you going to make me a promise when I was born without what's necessary for what you're promising me? And if that ain't bad enough, I was born with something that's broken. But now if there was any hope, I'm too old for it. If you're going to make my husband the father of many nations, it ain't going to be through this one. <laughs> She's in trouble. But then Sarah also realizes not only is she no longer there, not only has she been trying for a long time, I'm, I'm building momentum here, but she got some mistakes along the way. Sarah wants to cry because now if the word is true, by this time next year, I'm going to have to carry my mess into my miracle. And the realization sinks in that if I had just been willing to wait, I could really enjoy what God has. But now I'm not going to enjoy it because every mistake I made is going to walk with me into the promise. Ah, oh, God, it wasn't supposed to be like this. And some of you can testify that you're scared of the blessing that God has for you because you've made some mistakes along the way that you don't want to have to carry into where it is God promised. There are some people that you've connected with that you don't want no parts in this next season that God has promised. There are some things that you've done and some scars that you are going to have to carry into this next place that God has called you to. And now you're having to reckon in your mind, God, how can I fully enjoy the promise when I got to carry my problems into it? She wants to cry because she has to realize that 
I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that I moved prematurely, and because I moved prematurely, I'm carrying something into a place it should have never been in. Mm. Now, that's the problem, but I've come to the conclusion, and this brings me to my first thought, there's nothing you can mess up that God can't bless up. Come on now. I said that too quick. I'm sorry. No, you didn't. Look at your neighbor real quick. Say neighbor. Neighbor. There is nothing you can mess up that God can't bless up. I must be at the wrong church. There is nothing that you can mess up that God can't bless up. Okay, what am I saying? Uh, 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 he tells her, I'm going to make your husband the father of many nations. But she's messed up uh -huh. because she's given that to another woman. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, here's what's amazing about how this story plays out. This, this is why it pays to read your Bible. Uh, 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 the promise is given to Sarah. Uh -huh. Sarah takes matters into her own hands and says, Abram, you go sleep with her because sleeping with me ain't working. Mm -hmm. He sleeps with her and pop goes the weasel, she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. She has a baby. Uh -huh. And here's where the story gets interesting. It's a baby, but it ain't what God has promised. Mm -hmm. So it's a form of the promise, uh -huh. but it ain't the fullness of the promise. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, it's a substitute. Mm -hmm. And many of you have gotten satisfied with substitutes. Come on. Some of y'all are so satisfied with your substitute that you're bragging on something oh, God never God promised you. Come on. So, some of y'all are showing off the substitute. <laughs> She's excited about the substitute until she realizes in her mind that the promise is still good. <laughs> that I've been celebrating the substitute, but the real thing is on the way. So now she has to get rid of the substitute. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself because this happens beyond this text. But she then tells Abraham, I don't like the substitute no more because the real thing is coming. Now, I know I told you to do it, but now I'm telling you to do something different. Get rid of her. Now, Abraham's stressed out because he like, what, what you mean? You told me. Delay with this one. I know what I told you, but she can't have no parts in what God's about to do. Abraham has a conundrum. And it's here that we see the first child support payment. He puts her on a horse, gives her some water and some bread and says, be gone. Some of y'all can testify. Y'all got baby daddies just like that. Give some bread and some water. Like, this child needs more than some bread and some water. Let me get off your toes. I'm sorry. But it's in the middle of that. It's in the middle of that. I'm about to bless you. It's in the middle of that. That God says, I know what you've experienced. I know you got roped into somebody else's nonsense. I know you're now carrying something you had no intention of carrying because of someone else's craziness. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm so good and I'm so God. I'm going to bless your son to be a nation. I don't get it yet. God says, I'm going to make a nation out of the mistake. Okay. So then there's another son that's coming. And that's the son who's first promised. To be a nation. But here's the dilemma. God says, I'm going to make you the father of nations. That's plural. But if Isaac is the promised son, that's only one nation. But God says, I'm so good and I'm so God. I'm going to turn the mistake, Ishmael, into a nation. Y'all ain't getting it yet. There are two sons. One is a promise. One is a problem. But both are nations. God is so good. Ah, I feel this thing. God is so good that he says, Sarah, I already know you're going to trip. 
So here's what we're going to do. Since you're going to trip, I'm going to bless the mistake to be a nation. I'm still going to bless the chosen son to be a nation. And my word is still going to come forth because now instead of a nation, you still going to have nations. I thought I was in a church. My God. God is so bad, and this is why I don't know why you're tripping. God is so bad that he has already pre-calculated your mishaps and your mistakes and your missteps to the point that he's going to fulfill his word through what you did wrong as well as what he did right. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his. I'm so glad that God can still work a miracle in the middle of my mess. Thank you, Lord. God said, my word is so powerful yes. that it has to come to pass. And so if you only have Isaac, you only got a nation. But I'm going to tie Ishmael in so that I can have a fulfillment of what I said and give you nations. There's nothing you can mess up that God can't bless up. I found out that in 1853, uh, 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 there was a chef in New York who kept making fries for this customer. And the customer kept sending the fries back saying they ain't crispy enough. <laughs> so the chef got mad and cooked them a little harder and sent them back out. He said, they still ain't crispy enough. And the chef got madder and cooked them even harder and sent them back. He said, I'm sorry, these just ain't crispy enough. And so he said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show this customer. I'm going to fix him. I'm going I'm to show him. Uh, uh, and he cut the potatoes extremely thin. And after cutting them extremely thin, he fried them extra hard and he sent them out thinking he was going to finally get this customer thinking, I'm going to show you something. I, I know you asked for this, but I'm going to give you something else. And to his surprise, the customer didn't send them back. He ordered two more orders. Out. <laughs> okay. Okay. The chef thought he was doing one thing. And found himself inventing the first potato chips. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, there's nothing you can mess up that God can't bless up. Yes. God took their mistake. God took their impatience. God took them taking matters into their own head and said, listen, I'm so good and I'm so God that I've already factored all that in and somebody ought to throw a shoe across the room because you done made so many mistakes through your life. You done had so many misfortunes in your life. There are so many wrong roads you have walked on and God said, I'm so good and I'm so God that my word is still going to come forth. I know you tried to disprove what I said, but my my word is, I'm so glad that he's a God who speaks those things that are not as though they are. I know your womb was dead. I know you are too old to have babies, but if I said it, you're going to see it. And that's going to be somebody this time next year. Your testimony is going to be that God said it, I see it, and to God be all the glory. There's nothing. Yes. You can mess up. Yes. <laughs> that God yes. can't bless up. Yes. We cry, we laugh to keep from crying. Uh -huh. But we've been trying for a long time, and in our try, we done messed up so much stuff. But God is so good yes. Yes. that you ain't got to laugh to keep from crying. Keep laughing because yes. He about to bless up your mess up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we we laugh to keep from crying because we tired. Yes. We tie. We tie. You can spell it just like that. Don't even put an R in it. We tie. We, we tie. I'm, I'm talking for some of y'all. You don't want to say it. The truth of the matter is, you're tied. You're tied. Some of y'all got that color, uh, color purple testimony. All my life, I had to fight. I'm tired. I'm tired. I ain't making it up. It's right there in verse 12. So she laughed to herself and said, After I am worn out, she laughed. To herself and said, after I am worn out, Sarah describes herself as being worn out. Mm -hmm. How tired do you have to be wow. that the word you speak over your life oh, is I'm worn out? Mm -hmm. Now, to be worn out, if, if I can paint a picture, because tired is one thing, but worn out, <laughs> that, that's a whole nother thing. 
You, you ever seen a shoe that's worn out? Yeah. A shoe that's worn out is a shoe that ain't got no soul. There used to be ridges and it's just smooth now. When you wear a thing out, that, that means the original purpose for which it was designed for is no longer there. She says, I'm worn out. How, how is it that in this season of my life where I'm worn out, God's going to work it out? Yes. Ah, that's a word for somebody. I'm worn out. But God says he's going to work it out. God, how are you going to work it out if I'm worn out? God, I, again, I don't have the necessary parts. I don't have the ability to do this thing anymore. God, my good days are behind me. I, I, God, how are you going to work it out when I'm so worn out? And it's a rough thing to get to a place of that much honesty that you can admit I'm in a season of my life where I look like what I'm going through. I feel like what I'm going, I know I ain't going to get no help in it. I feel like, God, I hear what you're saying, but I know what I'm feeling. I hear what you're saying, but God, I know what I'm seeing. God, I hear what you're saying, but God, I can't take another heartbreak. God, I hear what you're saying. Ah, but I can't get let go another time. God, I hear what you're saying, but I ain't got another try in me. God, I hear what you're saying, but if I got to fight one more time, I'm not going to survive. God, I hear what you're saying, but if the doctor tell me one more thing that's wrong with me, God, I hear what you're saying, but my God, if the preacher tell me one more time, I hear what you're saying, but I, I don't feel like high-fiving my neighbor. I feel like hitting my neighbor because what you're telling me is not matching the experience that I'm going through. I hear what you tell me in my dreams, but I wake up to a reality that feels like a nightmare. God, what is going on? I'm tired. I'm tired of all these folks who have an expectation of me. You're a woman. Your womb should be working. You're a woman. You should be a mother. You're a woman. How would you allow another woman into your... You're supposed to be a woman. God, I'm supposed to be a woman, but nothing about me says woman. And I'm tired to the point that I'm trying to change me. Because God, you take it too long. You told me I'm going to be a mother, but I'm not a mother. You told me I'm going to be a preacher, but where the people? You told me I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I can't even get a like on Facebook. You told me I was going to write a book, but I break down in the middle of writing every chapter. God, where is it? I'm tired. And folks have an expectation yes, yes. that ain't matching my experience. Yes, yes. It's somehow folks can be so good intention and be messing you up at the same time. Uh -huh. Reminding you, you said God said this. I know yes. what he said. Yes. But it ain't here. And she's tired. God, I've been trying so long that now I'm tired. And the little bit of tread I had left on me, God, I'm just trying to hold it for me. Because if I lose this, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. If I lose this, I don't think I can come back. I know I ain't talking to nobody in here. But if I lose this last little bit, God, I, I, I don't know if, if, if I can recover from that. I might just have a meltdown. God, I don't know. And folks just keep telling me, ah, oh, God's going to do this. And God's going to, you have received a prophetic word and you just wanted to tell him, shut up. <laughs> oh, Okay, okay. I, let me tell it. Oh, Let me tell you. You know how many times I've been prophesied that I'm a preaching stadiums? Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. 20 folks show up on Sunday? Come on. Come on. I be wanting to tell them, shut up. I got 20 good folks when I get home. And if I'm not careful, I will become okay yeah. with the alternative. Yeah. And so I make up in my mind every Sunday when I get up, I don't care how many folks show up, I'm going to preach like it's a stadium. On, because his word does not return unto him void. I'm tired. But my tiredness ain't take my try away. And if I don't tell you nothing else today, don't let your tiredness take away your try. Because the last try 
Jesus. Maybe the one. She says, I'm tired. I'm tired. And people have an expectation of me that don't match my experience. So God, I hear it, but I don't want to hear it. Yeah. This brings me to a thought. Is it possible that when you're worn out, Jesus, <laughs> that God is just getting warmed up? Yes. Oh my God, who am I preaching to today? Is, 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 is it possible <laughs> that, that at the moment you're worn out, it's, it's when God is just getting warmed up? I'm going to say it one more time and I'm going to see if I can paint a picture. Is, is it possible? Uh -huh. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. How is it possible yes. that in your worn out, God's just getting warm? Let me see if I can give you something to shout about. It is, it is officially hurricane season. It's officially hurricane season. They already name it hurricanes. And one of the things about hurricane season is hurricane winds. And hurricane winds are interesting because hurricane winds have this inept ability uh, to, to knock out power. That if the wind gets a little too strong, that it will knock out the power or the electricity wherever you are. Those hurricane winds are something terrible. They will knock the power out. I'm, I feel like that's a word for somebody that oh, hurricane winds will knock the, the, maybe the problem for some of us is we're so tired because the winds of life have just knocked the power out of us. But nevertheless, hurricane winds will knock the power out. Now, remember, I was working for a company uh, 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 and, and, and at this company, I did tech support and, and I had to be on the phones and uh, I was in the middle of a call and hurricane winds started to come through that area of Chesapeake I was working in. And all of a sudden, the lights began to flicker and the lights went out. What messed me up, though, was that immediately after the lights went out, all of a sudden, what they call storm lights came on. And in the midst of the storm lights coming on, I noticed that my computer remained on. Now, that's interesting because my calls were routed through my computer. So I began to wonder what is happening because the winds have not the power out, but there's still power. Yes. The winds had not the power out, uh -huh. but I somehow still had, I thought I was in a church. The winds had not the power out of the building, but I somehow had power at my desk. I later found out that the building came with a generator. Can I tell you how generators work? The way a generator works is that the moment the source of power goes out, the generator kicks in. Okay, let me, let me break it down a little further. Uh, 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 the generator is constantly monitoring the building. And the moment it senses an abnormality in the building, it don't ask questions. Ah, it just goes on. It monitors the building. And the moment the building is out of power, it kicks power. It monitors the building. And the moment the building ain't got no more in it, it floods the building with everything that's it. I'm trying to help some. We have someone called the Holy Ghost who monitors our building. And he monitors our building all the time. And the moment this building ain't got no power, Holy Ghost generator kicks in. Bishop used to do it this way. My Holy Ghost generator will kick in when my building is out. In other words, when I'm worn out, God's just getting warmed up. And some of you can testify that it was in your place of worn out that God showed up and showed out. It was in the place where you thought the relationship didn't have no more. But God stepped in and became the husband or wife you didn't have. Ah, it was 
when your child was facing prison and the judge was being unfair. God stepped in and became a righteous judge. It was in that place you didn't think you could make it no more. God stepped in and became your power. Paul said it this way. I prayed three times for God to take this thing away, but he said, no, no, no. My grace is sufficient. But he didn't stop there. He said, in your weakness. In your weakness. Come on, sir. My strength yeah. is made perfect, yeah. which means that if you're worn out, oh my goodness. you're right where you need to right. be to experience God in a way you've never experienced yeah. him before. So don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> Laugh. Because if you're worn out, that means God's just getting warm. Yeah. We've been trying too long. We tired. Yeah. I'm tired up here preaching. <laughs> but, but, but can I give you another one? Come on. Because we feel like Ooh, we're out of time. Yes. <sighs> I ain't going to get no help. Yes. We feel like we're out of time. Oh, uh -huh. I'm sorry, y'all, a bunch of adolescents in here. Uh, we feel like I'm, I'm old. I feel like I'm out of time. I'm, I'm only 36, and I feel like I'm out of time. We feel like we're out of time. Out, you don't want yeah. your neighbor to know. It's okay. We feel like yeah. we out of time. Yeah. We feel like we got more years behind us than we have in front. We feel like, God, if you were going to do it, you would have done it. But we feel like, God, I listen, I'm, I'm going to just coast for the rest of these years. I, I ain't got no more. We feel like we're out of time. She goes on to say in the latter part of verse 12, and my Lord is old. Now, I love what she did there because that's, that's a woman move. That's a woman move. That's a woman move. I don't know, God. Because my man old. <laughs> I'm going to set Sarah free. Sarah, you old. I would tell you to set a Sarah free in here, but I don't want nobody to give you up. Sarah, you old. I know Abraham old, but you old too. My Lord is old. Will I have delight? Will I experience the fullness of what I got okay with in part? Wow. Will I really experience the joy of giving birth to a promise God placed inside of me? Will I experience that level of delight of, of giving my husband the best gift I can give him? And that's a legacy. Will I experience? Be, be, because in my mind, I'm out of time. My, my best years are behind me. God, I, I got some okay years left, and I'm to a place where God, I'm okay with just being okay. And some of y'all, you want to judge Sarah, but the truth is, you become okay yeah. with being okay. God, as long as I can pay the bills. I'm, God, as long as they come home at night. God, as, 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 long, as long as I got a job. God, I'm okay with being okay. I'm going to just spend the rest of these years being okay. Sarah is 89 years old. Abraham is 100. Now, I see why they frustrate. <laughs> Why are you frustrated? <laughs> Ain't nobody 89 in here that I know. Let's see if anybody telling themselves. Ain't nobody 89. And ain't nobody 99. They're 89 and 99. I get why they feel like they're out of time. We're only promised like what seventy years mm -hmm. after the flood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 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 if you over seventy, you on overtime right now. <laughs> you, you on extra credit. <laughs> you, you, you 
then got some years from somebody else. And to God be the glory. Yes. To God be the glory. But I see why they tripping. Cause, cause, cause God, we 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 on borrow time right now. And we ain't did it yet. Now this is interesting to me because they end up having the son the next year. They end up having the son the next year. She's 90, he's 100. And I did some homework and I found out, I found out that Sarah died at 127 years old. This blesses me. Can I tell you why this blesses me? Because if she had Isaac at 90, and she lived to be 127. She got 37 years with her blessing. <laughs> she didn't think she had enough time to experience the miracle. But not only did she experience the miracle, she got to enjoy the miracle. Let's see if I made this point. Um... In the NBA, y'all know I'm a basketball fan, mm -hmm. there are 48 minutes of regulation basketball. 48 minutes of regular play. Basketball games should only be 48 minutes. But there's this strange phenomenon that happens at the 48th minute. In the 48th minute, if neither team is winning, or losing, they go into what they call overtime. And what should have been a 48 minute game gets extended five minutes. I said that too fast. If at the end of the game, you're not winning or losing, more time is given. I said that too fast. If at the end of the game, you're not winning and you're not losing, more time is given. Okay. Some of y'all are saying, God, I'm 90 and I ain't winning. And God is saying, but you ain't losing either. <laughs> Some of y'all say, God, I, 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 I'm still single. I don't feel like I'm winning. But you ain't losing either. <laughs> God, I, 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 ain't, I still ain't seen that million yet. I don't feel like I'm winning. And God is saying, uh, but you ain't losing. If at the end of the game, you're not winning and you're not losing, then you go into overtime. In other words, Sarah is at year 90. She's not winning. But God said, baby, you ain't losing either. And so the prophet said it this way. He says, I'm going to restore the years that the locust and the canker worm destroyed. That messed me up. Let me tell you why that messed me up. Because because locusts and canker worms don't eat years. They eat harvest. <laughs> We know some light bulbs. Locusts and canker worms don't eat years. <laughs> they eat harvest. They eat fruits and veggies. God says they ate your fruits and veggies. <laughs> but I'm going to give you. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? I'm going to restore <laughs> the time. Watch this. After the enemy ate your tribes. I know you thought you were losing because of the tribes. And I know you thought you were out of time. Baby, the game ain't over. The game is just beginning. Because I'm going to restore the time that you lost in the tribes. Sarah thinks she's at the end of life at 89. And at 90, 
God not only does what he says he's going to do, he allows her 37 more years. Okay, I'm trying to help somebody. Stop tripping on the, uh, on the quantity of time and trust God for the quality of time. We serve a God, and I don't know who this is for. We serve a God who is saying, you lost the last two years. But what I'm going to do in the next two years is going to feel like 20 years. Not because I gave you a whole bunch of time, but what you're going to have in the time. It would have taken 20 years to get. I'm going to restore what, he, what the enemy ate up. And I'm going to give you more time to enjoy what I'm releasing. So, so, so don't cry. <laughs> Because you think you're out of time. Don't, don't, don't cry because because your biological clock is ticking. Because we serve a God who says, I'll do in the next year what you've been waiting 89 years for. And after I give it to you, the experience will be so amazing. I'm, I'm trying to give hope for somebody. That joke is going to be so good. You're going to forget all the failed relationships from the past 40 years. And your four years will. Preach, preach. Like a good spades hand. I may have a possible. We laugh to keep from crying because we've been trying so long. We laugh to keep from crying because we're tired. We laugh to keep from crying because we feel like we're out of time. But why you ought to be laughing mm -hmm. is because God can turn anything around. Yes. I think that's a good place to end. God yes. can turn anything. Somebody say anything. anything. He, he, he can turn anything around. Anything. I ain't make it up. It's right here in the text. He's, uh, verse 13, but the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh saying, can I really have a baby when I'm old? Is, is anything impossible for the Lord? Ah, it's Lord in all caps. It, it, it speaks to his all sufficiency. It speaks to his all powerfulness. It's Lord in all caps. Lord in all caps is also where we get Yahweh, which we then translate Jehovah. And we know one of the properties of Jehovah is Jireh. So it also speaks to his provision. Ah. Is there anything impossible, my God, for the Lord? All caps, all, all caps, all caps. That's funny because this generation has a saying. They say no cap. <laughs> uh, I think we as believers all start saying all caps. No cap. I serve a God of all caps. When God shows up in all caps, something crazy is about to happen. They ask the question. Is there anything impossible for the Lord? This is powerful because I told you they get the promise. A year later, they get the promise. And they sweating Sarah right now because Sarah is laughing. And again, I don't just believe she's laughing out of disbelief. I believe that, that life had hit her in such a sensitive spot that, that, that it was her only response. By this time next year, you're going to have it. Sure enough, a year comes. What messes me up, can I, can I tell y'all what messes me up about this? We don't realize the magnitude of this miracle. Sarah's womb is dead. She's barren. To be barren means that your womb lacks the functionality to give life. So this ain't just a usual miracle. See, it, childbirth at its core is a miracle. The fact that God can put a whole human being in a working womb is a miracle. The fact that a whole human being can come from where they come from is a miracle. But God has a dead womb. So that means he had to first bring the womb that had been dead for 89 years Ooh, to life. Okay. Ah, so he resurrects a dead 
womb uh -huh. to put a seed in it. The seed then gets fertilized and, 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 and grows in this womb and she gives birth to a healthy baby. Now that's a miracle. Because we live in a time that tells you once you get around 40s, you can't even have healthy babies no more. The woman is 89 with a, resur a resurrected womb. So he brings, he resurrects the womb, mm -hmm. puts life in the womb from a man whose seed should have been dead as well. They bring the baby, she pushes it out. Then comes the time to name the baby. And this is where I got excited. They named the baby Isaac. The reason y'all can't celebrate because you don't know what Isaac means. Can I tell you what the name Isaac means? I don't know if y'all want it bad enough. The name Isaac means laughter. Can't make this up. She laughed. Because she's in pain. Wow. Because she's reminded of a promise she thought was dead. And then God resurrects her womb. Jesus. Allows life to come from it. And she names it Isaac. Laughter. God took her laughter in her pain. Wow. And allowed her to produce laughter for her future. So watch this. I told you she died at 127. So the last 37 years of her life was filled with laughter. This is why I want to throw furniture. <laughs> 89 years of disappointment wow. forgotten yes. Hallelujah. forgotten because yes. it was filled with 37 oh years of laughter some of y'all saying Pastor Mike I've been crying for the past 25 Woo! years good 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 can I tell you why because the Bible says God bottles those tears come on God. come on God. And tears are liquid, mm -hmm. which means tears can be used to water, mm -hmm. which lets me know that God bottled up your tears, watered your pain yep. to produce your promise. Yeah. And the next 25 years will be filled with ice. Yeah. I don't know about you, but there are times in my life I had to laugh to keep from crying. Yeah. But in this season of my life, I'm just laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm just laughing. I, I ain't got no more tears. I'm laughing. Whatever God has told me, I'm going to laugh all the way to the bank. <laughs> Whatever God has told you, you better laugh all the way to the aisle. Whatever God has told you, laugh all the way downtown to get that business license. Yes. Laugh all the way into that ministry position. Yes. Laugh yes. all the way into that restored relationship. Yes. Laugh all the way to your baby's graduation, who they said would be in prison. Laugh all the way. It don't matter how weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning.